it is the 18th of December 2013 and I just arrived in Taupo. This morning I got my full license, picked up a hitchhiker on the way here. The drive is really good and now I found myself that I'm at the end of my first year of teaching. Next year is my last year in Wellington. So at this stage I think I'm going to go to San Francisco at the end of the year. Though I might make it, I might go somewhere else first before going there. In fact, I just picked up a I picked up a hitchhiker on the way up here, who's going to Bhutan to teach. He's a teacher. I'm um, just going to go teach maths with the Canadian Bhutan Foundation, Bhutan Canada Foundation or something. And apparently they take um, people from all around the world. So I could. Um, so I'm going to look into that. But assuming that weren't a thing, a possibility, then I could maybe go to Southeast Asia for a couple of months, travel through there, and then go to. Everything that has happened to me this year has been the result of picking up a hitchhiker in the central North Island of New Zealand. All of the meaningful events that have happened this year hinge completely on that. Throughout this year, one of the challenges of my job has been that teenagers here have nothing to read in English that relates to their own lives. So I decided to write a young adult novel called Doji. There was a long silence as Mr. Tenzin let Doji think about what he had said. He defended his story. I found Joseph time staring at his book, but he struggled to take at things. He constantly caught himself replaying the moments of the last few moments in his head again. Doji was, Doji was the one who, who approached Mr. Tenzin. It was in the same last, last period, class after which they had last talked. As well as giving a copy to each of my students, I also sent a few to schools around Bhutan. It might have some small effect on some student who I have never met and will never meet and their trajectory might be altered in some small way. I initially drove past the hitchhiker, and it was only vague feelings of guilt that made me turn around. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be in Bhutan, and I wouldn't have written the book. One of my favorite books of all time is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. The title, The Unbearable Lightness of Being, is a perfect distillation of our circumstance. The central plot of the story concerns Thomas and Teresa, who meet when Thomas, who is a surgeon, goes to a small town to replace another surgeon who has sciatica. They meet because he stays in a certain hotel and she happens to be on duty. It had taken six chance happenings to push Thomas towards Teresa. So fateful a decision resting on so fortuitous a love, a love that would not even have existed had it not been for the chief surgeon's sciatica seven years earlier. We all reject out of hand the idea that the love of our life may be something light or weightless. Thomas comes to the conclusion that the love story of his life is the result not of it must be, but of it could just as well have been otherwise. What seems clear to me is the role that chance plays in shaping our lives. You apply for 10 jobs, you get one, and you move somewhere new, and you stay there for the rest of your life. You have a choice between two parties. You go to one, and there you meet the person that will be your life partner. Or perhaps you turn down one street, and you get hit by a truck. You turn down the other, you live. The things we care most about in our lives, our jobs, our partners, our friends, where we live, our adventures, come at the end of long chains of events. Most of us find a way to make a life and be happy. And because we find ourselves happy and with lives that are embedded and connected, it seems strange when we notice that all of the events that led to where we are are fragile and tenuous and could just as easily have been different. And that feels like fate. Because our lives mean so much to us, it seems sort of unacceptable that they might not have any weight in the universe at large. It seems impossible that it could be buffeted and shaped and directed by forces that are beyond our control. I think that feeling of fate is our brain's response to the helplessness that it feels when it crunches into complexity that it can't deal with. Things collide with each other, and they collide with us. And these collisions shape our ideas and everything about our lives. The inherent meaningfulness of our lives juxtaposes with the obviously uncaring universe. 
and it seems like it can't possibly be that way. What does love mean if your life partner, given different events, could just as easily have been somebody else? It is comforting to think that there is some plan and some destiny that you're a part of. You are mostly in control of what you choose, but you're not in control of the choices that are presented to you. I don't know what that means. That's the unbearable lightness of being. It's the deep attachment you have to the life that you have with the knowledge that it could just as easily have been different. That can be scary. It's also deeply absurd. Also, beautiful. Yeah.